Hey guys, welcome to another TTT, a tabletop talk. Today we'll have a talk about one of these guys. This is a WL Troyes 12 4019, a 12th scale RTR buggy, which definitely seem quite popular these days. Now, at the same time, these WL Troyes cars have caused some discussion on the internet among the Tamiya enthusiasts, especially regarding the price ratio for a Tamiya entry level and a WL Toys entry level. Now there's some that have even called these the death of all Tamiya entry level cars and think it's a very controversial topic, but I will definitely discuss that and give my view why I do not think it's the death of Tamiya entry levels and why I do not think it's that controversial. First of all, I definitely do not have anything against all these other friends and people talking about and discussing this topic. So this is just a friendly conversation, friendly discussion, and I will just give my absolutely personal view on this. Secondly, I do not think this has to be a discussion about WL Toys RTR ready to run models versus a Tamiya assembly kit. Now this is a TT02B assembly kit and it definitely requires a lot of time and tools but it also requires paint and radio and servo and battery and charger in order to get it up and running and in total these kits will definitely most of them outpass in price be well beyond these new WL toys. But that's the name of the game. Kids and youngsters and beginners and adults, all people of the late modern society aren't building as much as they used to in the 70s and 80s. And I think the RTR RC car model market has definitely surpassed the kit market like maybe 20 years ago. So there's really nothing new and controversial about an assembly kit versus a, an RTR model because yeah, no one is really building RC models or model cars or model planes anymore compared to the 1980s. So I think these assembly kits are for us that enjoy it, us hobby grade enthusiasts and maybe there are some parents that can inspire their young kids, if they know about these kids, to build them together as a family project. But yeah, the battle has been lost 20 years ago and I don't think, well, we should mourn the loss of interest in assembly kits anymore, but just enjoy them and maybe inspire those around us to enjoy them too. You definitely still can get a lot of kits that are cheaper than the TT02B four-wheel drive. This is a Grasshopper for two-wheel drive. And when you're buying this and building this, you're buying and building a piece of RC history. And again, it shouldn't really be compared to getting a new modern buggy with double wishbone suspension and everything. Because yeah, this is a piece of RC history and we can't demand that kits are building these nowadays just as much as I definitely wasn't playing with the uh, 40s or 50s toys when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s. If you want to build something cheap then there's definitely a lot of Tamiya buggies like the two-wheel drive new fighter buggy with double wishbone suspension and oil fill shocks and I do not think these ones it all depends on your country or availability in your dealer's shop but I do not think these will cost much more than a modern 
WL Toys ready to one vehicle like the 124019. So you need paint, you need radio, you need server, battery and charger, but I think it will probably be around 140, 150, 60 dollars, so about the same as these new high-spec buggies from WL Toys. And there are cheaper kits from other brands, but what you're really getting is a decent manual and you're getting parts that fit great together and goes very well and easily together with this. And of course you get a lot of quality plastic and all that kind of stuff. So again, if we should compare a WL Toys with anything, we should compare it with an RTR buggy. This is an RTR ready to run, or as Tamiya likes to call them, an XB model, expert build, factory built model. I'll get into the specs and discussion. There are definitely some critique of Tamiya to be had, but yeah, there have definitely always been RTR buggies that are a lot cheaper than Tamiya. And I do not think this will change anything and make Tamiya drop the prices or upgrade the specs of their models. Now, ever since the 1980s, there has been a lot of models and RTR models, ready to run models released that have been in direct competition with Tamiya. This is a much cheaper Turbo Panther and RTR toy grade, granted. These two are toy grades, so you couldn't really get spare parts, but they definitely, as far as I know, sold more units worldwide than Tamiya Grasshoppers or Hornets. Nico even made one-tenth scale models like this, where you actually got an RTR buggy and you could get a lot of spare parts. And here's my first little RC from 1984, the first I ever got. And if anyone can see which Tamiya this should be inspired from, then leave it in the comments. Needless to say, Tamiya has always been in competition with much cheaper and much smaller and more famous and popular yeah, models. Just like Nico and Tile in the 1980s, WL Toys and HBX and other brands have been making these smaller vehicles. Granted, there's much more hobby grade about these and you can get parts and everything and upgrade them to all metal cars and everything if you want to. But the story is still the same, cheaper RTR models and I don't see anything controversial. It's been happening since the 1980s. So whether one likes it or not, the market has been moving towards these RTR vehicles for more than 20 years, whether it's the cheap WL Toys or HBX or the more expensive Traxxas or Armour brands. So yeah, I'm not really seeing anything that should cause the death of Tamiya entry levels, whether it's the RTR or assembly kits. I think there's room enough for everything and I definitely see Tamiya putting out a lot of these entry levels and I definitely see a lot of interest on my channel for these Tamiya entry levels whether it's the RTR models or the kits. So controversial, no. I think it's been going on for quite some time. And I think Tamiya definitely sells a lot less kits than they used to. But I think there will be several, several years before we can even start discussing if it's the death of Tamiya entry levels. Let's get back to the discussion whether these WL Taurus, these new ones, this is a 144001 and this is a 124019. Whether these are causing the death of all Tamiya RC cars or entry level cars. Now these definitely have a lot of impressive specifications and they definitely have a good look. I like them anyway and yeah, a lot of shiny metal, metal drive shafts everywhere around, metal gears, even got a metal chassis or metal towers, metal shocks, and they come maybe not perfectly set up with the turnbuckles, but you can always change that. 
but definitely they come with some nice shocks which have impressed a lot of people compared to the price. Now the price ratio of these have definitely surpassed $100. I think this one is around $100 to $120 depending on which battery or battery packs, dual or triple packs you want with it. And this one is definitely, I think, $130, $150. So they are not that cheap anymore compared to the old WL toys, which were selling for definitely under $100. But still, you get a lot value for your money. And these are a ton of fun to run. I have been giving these and also all the other WL toys for review by Banggood and I absolutely love running them and filming them and testing them so they are definitely good value for the money and I don't think that's the problem here this is my HBX rocket buggy and when I was sorry it's running away from me when I was returning to the hobby as an adult in 2013 Everybody in Denmark and I would say Scandinavia was buying these HBX 1 tenth scale. So this could really be compared to a Tamiya 1 tenth scale. But for a bit above $200, I think you got brushless systems and you got turnbuckles and you got double wishbone, you got metal drive shafts, you got shock tires, shock towers, which definitely are set up very nicely so yeah for the price of a tamiya xb model rtr model or maybe a little more you could definitely 10 years ago already buy something that has more impressive specs than the tamiya's so if we should do a strict comparison of a tamiya rtr xb model and a wl toys xb or rtr model four wheel drive both versions this setup could definitely be it the tto2b now don't be scared about this body it's a love it or hate it dual rich model it comes in much more standard versions or much more buggy looking versions for the same price now it's always a bit difficult to talk about prices because prices fluctuates and it varies depending on your country and shipment methods and import duties and everything but if this was around 140 dollars i think this was around 140 dollars too granted this was probably on sale i definitely buy all my tamiya xb models on sale so you're probably looking for maybe around 180 200 dollars in normal prices granted you have to buy battery and charger on top of this the uh, US and European versions do not come with any charger and battery only the Japanese so it's around maybe 20 or 40 US dollars on top of that so yeah you're looking to spend a little more money on the Tamiya than the WL toys but it's definitely not twice as much as I've heard claims about maybe around one third or one fourth more money for the Tamiya but definitely not double the price. One thing that definitely has to be taken into account too is the size. So the Tamiya is a one tenth scale and the WL Toys is a one twelfth scale. So we got a lot longer wheelbase on the Tamiya and we even got, if I can put it up here, a lot longer without destroying my Tamiya body and in even more width here. So it's definitely longer and wider the Tamiya and just in person it's a much much larger buggy. We are finally getting to the specifications and yeah there's really no way around it. What you get with a RTR TTO2B Tamiya is definitely a lot of plastic and I mean a lot. So we got the drive line 
all the drive line, the complete drive line is plastic with a few couple of metal pins. The gears are plastic and the suspension is plastic. You get no turnbuckles, but you get these rigid upper arms, which doesn't allow for any adjustments. And yeah, pretty much a plastic buggy. Now, even though Tamiya has been known for sometimes making the wrong or choosing the wrong type of plastic, even though it's quality, sometimes they use this hard plastic for the arms, which break very easily. The TTO2B has actually been known to be quite durable compared to the price. So you definitely get a lot of plastic, but you get a lot of quality plastic. And I will definitely put my money on the durability of the Tamiya ESCs and servos and motors more than I will put my money on the durability of the WL toys. The last good, I think, compared to the price, but yeah, I've never ever had any trouble with Tamiya electronics as far as I can remember anyway. Again, the setup is okay for a beginner. We got some pretty hard shocks, so it's pretty much set up for more like a carpet running or anything. And you definitely need to make some adjustments if you want to do some heavy off-roading with these. But yeah, all filled shocks and everything, and you can adjust it as you please. So in general, what you get here is a lot of shiny metal and what you get here is a lot of shiny plastic. Now plastic in my view and a lot of others view doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing because plastic bends back whereas alloy just bends and stays bent. I have definitely bent some of these shock towers on my 144001. But yeah, I think both cars are pretty durable. What I would like to see here with Tamiya is adjustable upper arms and linkages. So some turnbuckles would be, uh, be nice, but I don't see that coming very soon in their entry level lines. Uh, yeah, of course, number one critique point is always the bushings. So this one is full of plastic bushing where this one is fully ball raised. I think the critique has been around for many, many years and I don't see Tamiya changing anything. Definitely not as long as we are buying them. Speaking about spare parts and upgrades, I do think that the WL Taurus has the upper hand in terms of prices and availability. You might have to, depending on where you live, wait a long while sometimes to get your spare part or upgrade where there seems to be more dealers that have Tamiya TT-02B stock parts in Europe and the States and so on. But in general, you have to pay a little more for the Tamiya ones. And sometimes the original plastic parts also come in trees, parts trees, where you have to buy a whole tree to just get one little other arm or anything like that. There are GPM, three racing, year racing, uh, alloy parts available for these, but you can still also supply your car with cheaper Chinese parts. But yeah, I don't see anything to worry about when it comes to upgrades and spare parts for these two. These are definitely cheaper. And I think maybe there's a chance that they will not be available for as long as the Tamiya ones, but we have to see about that. The spare parts and upgrade parts for the A959-6979 for this one that was released seven or eight years ago are still available. So I suspect with the popularity of these WL Toys buggies here that spare parts will be available for many years. For a conclusion, I do agree and I do think there's room for some improvement when it comes to the Tamiya entry buggy line. Like ball bearings, like turnbuckles and maybe a little drop in prices. 
especially under these COVID-19 circumstances, the prices for Tamiya have just skyrocketed in Europe here. Will I think it will ever happen? No. I think the interest for Tamiya, for the brand and the history, when you're buying one of these RTR models, you're definitely buying a brand, you're buying a piece of history. So I do not think there will ever be any large improvements compared to the DF02, which the TT2, TT02B is the successor to. There has actually been a downgrade with metal parts, driveline and gears and such, ball bearings. I do not think anything will happen with Tamiya. They will neither maybe upgrade or change themselves, but they will definitely not vanish or die because of WL Toys. I think it's a brand that will stay like this, perhaps for the next 10, 20 years, as long as there are buyers. And I do not think they will start trying to compete with WL Toys or Traxxas or any other of the brands. So is it that controversial and is WL Toys killing Tamiya? I do not think so. I think Tamiya will stay the same for many years to come and they will survive even with the plastic bushings. So there's different segments buying the WL Toys and the Tamiya cars and the entry level kit days, they are pretty much over and has been over for the last 20 years. And Tamiya is still producing a lot of kits and a lot of RTR models and they still are thriving, I think, and making new models. So there is room for both cars on the market, I think. And yeah, so let's just enjoy the WL Toys cars for what they are and the Tamiya cars for what they are. I think there's definitely plenty of positive sides on both sides. That's it. I would love to hear from you in the comments and hear you opinion about this so let's have a little brief discussion in the comment section for now thanks for watching happy holidays keep them running and take care